In this video, I'm going to walk you through five steps that I personally use when I go solve any software engineer coding interviews, as well as how to solve questions that I have never seen before. Now, the first step is to clarify the question. So here on the right, you can see we're given a question, right? And we're trying to merge all the link lists into one sort of link list and return it. So that's the goal. And in a real world scenario, maybe the interviewer might verbally communicate the problem to you. And you, your goal is to take the questions that are given and then try to maybe write it down on the text pad and try to confirm with the interviewer right and in this case the first step what i always try to do is to clarify and to clarify what's the problem and also clarify what's the input and the, out and the output for the problem right sometimes the interview might not give you an example and it's kind of like your task to ask what's the input and what's the output right and here you can see uh kind of some some questions for example like what kind of link list are we talking about is it like circular link list or is it like a singly link list right is it going to be integer link list can it also contain like characters right or uh strings or any other thing right or uh, do we have to do any validation check right uh, can there also be like null value right so there are some constraints that we have to clear before we go into like what are some of the approaches right now after we clarify that there these are the uh, constraints then right now is probably a good time to talk about the approaches right what are some approaches to solve this problem and sometimes candidates might get stuck at the stage. So it's very, very important to focus on solving the smaller problem, right? For example, how to merge two link lists, right? Forget about how to merge K number of link lists, focus on how can we be able to solve or how can we be able to merge two link lists. So for example, if I want to merge two link lists, right, then in this case, I have two, uh, two pointers that points to the head node for each link list. And then we compare the value. In this case, they're all equal to each other. So we take the bottom one. And then in this case, since uh, one is smaller, so we take one, right? And then we move the pointer, uh, uh, to the next node right and then two is smaller so in this case we're taking number two and then here you can see three smaller so we take number three and then here you can see four they're all equal to each other right then in this case we're just going to take any of them in this case let's take number four right the top one and then you can notice that one pointer is out of bound so if that's the case then what you can basically do is to have result.nest right in this case is this result list right here is equal to either uh this sublist or this sublist but ideally we want to have the result list to combine or add the nest node to be this one right here. The result dot nest is equal to this sub list, right? So in this case, this is what we do, right? We check which pointer is null. If it's null, then we basically get the result dot nest is equal to that sub list, right? So that's kind of like, you know, how we can be able to merge two link lists. Now, now the problem is how can we be able to merge K link lists? Now, similar approach about how we can be able to merge two link lists, right? We first merge the first two link lists. Once we merge the first two link lists, right? We get a, we get a longer link list. Then we can be able to use this link list to merge merge the remaining link list, right? So we can be able to merge all of them, right? And at the end, you can see the time complexity is K times N, where K is number of link lists that we have in the lists. And then N is basically total number of nodes, right? We basically iterate K number of times. And then for each iteration, we basically merge two link lists into one. So now the step two is to talk about the approaches, like I mentioned before. Now, of course, you might be thinking, okay, what are some ways to, you know, further optimize this time complexity, right? And you might be stuck. Well, my other tip for this one is to think about what's better than big O of K times N, right? Of course, there are some uh, algorithms or some big O notations that are better, right? That are faster than this one, right? For example, N log K or K log N, right? Or we can drop it down to linear where we have big O of N or big O of K, right? But that's not possible, right? So let's try to focus on, you know, what are some of the ways to solve this problem or further optimize the solution using big O of N log K or K log N. Now, the first question is like, you know, which one should we focus on, right? Should we focus on big O of N log K or should we focus on big O of K log N. Now, if you think about it, N is number of nodes that we have in the entire lists, right? Like in this case, you can see we have nine nodes. So N is equal to nine, right? But in this case, if we were to do log N, that means that we're only doing log N of nodes in the list, but we have to traverse, we have to visit all the nodes, right? Inside of our lists to be able to merge it. So this solution is not possible. So that's why we're going to focus on the big O of N log K, right? And we want to further optimize K, right? So before we, what we have is K times N, or n times k and now what we want to do is we want to focus on how we can be able to optimize this so that we can use log k right now in order to use log arithmetic um, uh, complexity there's a couple ways right for example we can use binary search right but the thing is that we're not searching anything so there's no point for using binary search and we can also use heaps right heaps we know that the insertion deletion uh, or trying to find that the top element in the heap is always a uh, big o of k right then in this case uh, what we can do is that we can use heaps or min heaps 
or max heap to solve this problem. To solve this problem using a priority queue or a min heap, what we can do here is that let's say we are given those two lists, right? So in this case, we can basically put them in a min heap so that the first element or the top element in the heap is guaranteed the smallest value, right? So we put the first, the head node for each list, right, onto the heap. And then we say that this is the, the, the smallest value. Then we can just basically pop that value out of it, right? So once we pop that out, we only have one node inside, which is this one, right? So we pop that out, we add it onto the result list. And then we basically also know that this node has also a nest pointer. So we basically add this node onto the min heap. So we have four, right? And then we know that this node is the smallest. So we pop that out. And then we know that this value is the small or this value uh, is the smallest. So we add it onto the result list. And then we have this node has a nest node, which is three. So we just add three onto it. And we know that three is smaller than four. So three is the toppest element in the min heap, right? So once we um, basically uh, add three onto it, right? We know that three is the smallest. So we pop that node out and then we add it onto the result list as well. And then here we basically add uh, the nest node, which is four, right? So four here, right? And then in this case, four is also the smallest. So we basically just pop that node out, right? And then we basically add that onto the result list. And then since there's no node that this node is pointing to, um, now we can basically just uh, remove that, right? We don't have to add it back to the min heap here. And then here you can see we have our four here. And then for four, in this case, you can see for four we uh, is the smallest in the heap. So we just remove that out of the heap. So uh, we basically add that to the result list. And then we basically move on to uh, add this node onto the heap, right? Because this node is pointing to node five. So we add node five onto the heap. And then node five is the smallest in the min heap. So we basically remove five out of it and then we just point this right point the result node on uh, to no five right add no five onto the result list and then here you can see we have nothing in our min heap so our answer is this so now you can see if we were to look at the approach that we're currently doing right focus on using a heap and the time complexity is going to be the big O of n times log k right uh, because in this case like I mentioned earlier the heap insertion and deletion is going to be log k and then the space complexity is going to be big O of k because we're only storing k number of nodes right storing k number of nodes into the heap and we're basically storing references right and then each node is pointed to the next node so we're only storing the reference to the heap so in this case it's going to be big o of k for the space complexity but of course very important to consider about time right if you don't have much time then of course tell the interviewer that hey how about let's try to focus on writing the implementation and then focus on the optimization later right or maybe we do have time or maybe the interviewer will like us to continue to uh further optimize then of course we will definitely try to you know talk about what are some other approach right to solve the problem right what, what are some pros and cons for each approach right and of course the other approach to solve this problem right is using divide and conquer right of course um the problem with the current approach is that space complexity is big over k right can we further optimize the um the space complexity down to for example big over one or big o of log k or something like that right then in this case we can be able to use something like uh divide and conquer right and the reason why here we're using divide and conquer is that because here you can see since all the lists are divided already and our task is basically to use like some kind of like merge sort for example right try to merge those two lists together and you can see that the um the time complexity is still n right which is the number of nodes that we have a log k right because you can see here we're basically merged the uh these lists in a log k um time complexity right uh when we try to merge back up right into a single list and of course the time complexity is going to be in log k and then the space complexity here is going to be either big o of one or big o of log k depends if we're using recursion right the recursion also account as the recursion stack so that also counts as a space as well but all in all you can see that it's even better than what we have before so maybe we can talk about that right talk about the pros and cons like here the pros is that you know we can be able to further optimize the space complexity here right step three is going to be focused on implementation right so to implement the code right for example let's say we're going to implement the uh the min heap solution right then in this case uh what i would like to suggest is to focus on you know focus on the higher level implementation right rather than focusing on the detail for example here you can see i basically trying to put or break this right by adding all the nodes into the min heap into a separate function right in this core main function i want to focus on you know what's the purpose right what's the goal that we want to achieve we want to be able to uh, add all the nodes 
onto the heap. And then we want to use heap to sort the nodes and then merge them together, right? Into one single linked list. And that's the purpose of this function, basically delegating these tasks into a separate function so that these sub functions can be able to deal with it, right? So you can see here, we add all the nodes into the heaps. And then for this function, we're trying to use min heap to sort the, uh, the linked lists, right? And here you can see uh, in this way, it's more better because let's say we're running out of time, right? We only have like 10 to 20 minutes to code. Then in this case, uh, we can be able to focus on just creating these functions. And then if we have time, we can come back and be able to fill these functions, right? You can see for add nodes, right? We basically adding all the nodes onto the heap. For min heap sort, we basically sort the min heap like this, right? So here you can see, we can basically break it down into separate functions so that we can be able to focus more on the core function here. After we're done with our implementation, it's very important to test the code, right? When I say test the code, not just to like, you know, click on the compile button just to compile to see what's the result. But of course, try to, you know, step through each and every single uh, line of the code. And we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, basically test the code with actual test case, right? So for example, here we have no three and no one. And then in this case, the goal is we want to merge these linked lists into one single list, list node, right? To one single link list. So now what to do first is we basically adding all the nodes to the min heap. And then here you can see after we add them, this is the result, right? So here we have one, no one, and no three, right? Add it onto the heap. And the top element in the min heap is going to be no one, right? And then we have our dummy node. We have our current node, right? And then we also have our min, min heap sort function. So we call this function we pass in the min heap, we pass in the current node. And then you can see here for min heap, this is what it looks like. And then while the min heap is not empty, right? We basically remove the first element that we have in our min heap, which is this one. And then we basically say that current node.nest, which is equal to top, current node is equal to top. And then we say that current node.nest, if it's not null, right? Of course it's not null. Then we're basically going to say that adding the nest node, right? Onto the min heap. And then for the nest iteration, we know that min heap is not null because we have currently have two nodes on the min heap, right? We have no two and no three. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the top element, which is no two. And then you can see, we basically test it from there, right? And this, and then in this case, uh, since the current node, no two dot nest is null. So we're going to move on to this iteration. And then the top element here is no three. So we basically do the same procedure. And then we basically adding no six, right? Which is the nest node for no three onto the min heap. And then we basically continue to iterate. Right. So basically try to step through the code line by line and trying to make sure that the, the test case that we're uh, uh, testing is actually working. Right. And try to test code with a smaller test case, because if you're using a larger test case, sometimes it's very time consuming. Right. So after we do the merge sort, right, or sorry, the, the min heap sort, uh, we basically have a result and a result is equal to dummy.nest, right? Because dummy node is just a dummy node is just an empty node. And we're, we're, what we're basically trying to do here is trying to uh, point the or return the result, which is equal to dummy node nest, which is this one right here. And then that's what we return, right? So for each line, we're basically adding a comment that this is the value that we're think uh, with our current test case, right? Now, after that, of course, there's also a chance to further optimize the time complexity or space complexity, right? So after we're done with te the testing, of course, maybe we still have time, then it will be better to talk about what are some other ways to further optimize, right? For example, using merge sort or divide and conquer, how can people to use divide and conquer to solve this problem, right? If we still have time. Now, just to summarize everything that we talked about basically we talked about five steps that to solve the problem right so for example here clarify the question discuss about the approaches what are the pros and cons for each approach as well as implement the approach in code right usually either in the text pad or in the uh, hacker rank uh, code compiler right and then then you basically want to test the code line by line and figure out what's the problem right make sure that the test cases that you mentioned in the interview works and then talk about the optimization right uh, what what are the solution what, what are some other approach that we can be able to further optimize the time complexity or space complexity, right? And the optimization can be done before the implementation or it can be done after the implementation, depends on the time. Now, let's say you got stuck, for example, then my suggestion here is that to focus on solving the sub problems, right? Uh, forget about, you know, merging K number of linked lists, try to focus on how can people to merge just, just two linked lists, right? And then build up the solution from there. And then also talk about optimization. Like, let's say if you don't know how to further optimize your solution, then think about what kind of or what other uh, complexities that is better than the current complexity. For example, current complexity, we're using um, big O of n times k, then the nest complexity that is better than n times k could be n times log k, right? Or uh, k times log n, right? Or it could be uh, linear time complexity, like big O of n, big O of k, and so on and so forth, right?